Okay, I'm going to create a chessboard in this video, and there are a few notes below here. I'm going to write a string that produces an 8x8 grid. I'll pass that string to console.log. Each line will be separated with new line characters, and each position of the grid will either be filled with an empty space or a hashtag character. And then I'm being asked to define a variable with the name size that's equal to 8, and I'm being asked to write the program so that if the value of size changes, if this value changes, then the entire chessboard will change too. Okay, so now let's get started. I'm going to start with the basics. I'm just going to create a for loop. So for, I'm going to define my counter variable as i and set it equal to 0 at the start and end that statement. Now to check whether the condition is true, I'm going to say i is either less than or equal to 8. As long as it's true, as long as that value is less than or equal to 8, let's continue uh, through the for loop and I'll increment i, or the value of i, by 1 each time. So each time I iterate through this for loop, as long as this condition's true, then I'll increment by 1 each time. And I'll close those parentheses. Now the next thing I want to do is I just want to check to see what happens if I were to below write console.log and I'll pass i in as a parameter and run this program. Okay, cool. So it looks like I'm getting a list of values from 0 to 8. And actually, let's see how many digits there are being displayed right now. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 digits that are displayed. Okay, interesting. Well, if I want to, if I want to add more information to this for loop, then I should put curly braces down. So now what some people actually do is they say, you know what, I might not be putting information or a lot of information inside of the for loop at the start, but maybe in the future I will. So for consistency, what people will do is they put parentheses or curly braces down at the start, so that way if they add information to the for loop in the future, then they don't have to go back and check to see whether those curly braces are there or not. Okay, now let's see what actually happens if I run through the program again. I should get the same information, and I do. But what would happen, I'm curious, as to what would happen if I were to remove the console.log function from inside the for loop and actually put it outside of the for loop. I'm going to run the program one more time, and then I'm going to talk about what's happening with both of these two different displays. Why am I getting a list of 0 to 8 in one display, but then I'm only getting a value of 9 in the last display? Well, this is what's happening. If console.log is inside of the for loop, like it was at the start, then the for loop is running through, it's iterating through the condition each time it's true, and it's incrementing the value of i by 1 each time. But each time you run through the for loop, console.log is being called and i the value for i is being passed in as a parameter each time so when i is at 0 it's being passed into console.log and being displayed when we increment 1 to 0 and get 1 i is being passed in as a parameter to console.log and again that value is being displayed and it does it all nine times as long as this condition is true it's displaying the value of i each time however when console.log is outside of the, of the for loop, it's only being called once. It's being called at the very end. Well, the last time this condition was true is when i was less than or equal to 8, so the value was at 8. Well, since that was true, i was incremented by 1, and the condition was checked one more time. Since 9, the value of 9, is not less than or equal to 8, it's a false statement, the condition wasn't true, and the for loop ended. Now that value of i, which was 9, was passed in as a parameter to console.log and displayed on the screen. But this isn't what I want, and this display up top isn't what I want. Okay, so now I'm going to start thinking about how can I put these characters in place of these numbers? How can I replace them? And I'm going to do that inside of the for loop. I'm going to use an if-else condition. So if... I'm going to say if, and I'm just trying this out, I don't know what's going to happen, if i is, uh, is divisible by, let's say, 2, and I'll talk about that in a second, so my remainder is equal to 0, let's just think about this. 
before I start talking about it, I'm going to put in some curly braces. So if i is divisible by 2, well, why am I using this value 2? Well, I have two different characters. I have an empty space character and a, a hashtag character. So that's why I'm using 2 as my remainder. Well, if it's divisible by 2, then I want to display one of the characters. And now, let's think about that. I'm just going to actually put that in. Uh, I'm just going to say, I, this is where I want to put my empty space character. So I'm making a note here. This is where I want my empty space. However, if this isn't true, I'm going to move this mouse. If this isn't true, I need to do something else. So, else, I'm not going to put the empty space. I'm going to display a hashtag right here. All right, so now I'm going to start thinking about how can I get either an empty string or a hashtag to display in my window over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new variable, and I'm going to name the variable board because I'm dealing with a chessboard here. And I'm going to put it in the wrong place right now. So just uh, let's see this. So if I actually name my variable board inside of this if else condition, in this first case, I'm going to set it equal to an empty string. Again, the reason was the first condition here is that if the value for i, when I divide it by 2, if the remainder is equal to 0, it's true. It's a true statement. I want to get this empty string, that empty space. But you know what? Maybe it's not true. So if it's not true, what I'm going to do is display a hashtag instead. Okay. So if it's not divisible by 2, then I want a hashtag. So when I run the program again, let's see what happened. Oop, didn't work, so let's try it again. Okay, so when I run it again, I get the value 9 again. But why did it get 9? Well, if I look over at console.log, I'm still passing i in as a parameter. I'm still only getting values or numbers for the for loop. And I have a new variable created named board, so I'm actually going to pass board in as a parameter into console.log. So now when I run the program, I'm going to see what happens again. And this time it looks like at the very bottom of the screen, this window here, it looks empty. There's nothing there. But if I actually click down on my mouse and drag over that window, I find that there's one empty space here, one empty space, which corresponds with the empty space of my if-else condition. So why is, why is this one empty space being displayed on the screen? Why am I not getting more than one empty space, and why aren't my hashtags being displayed either? Let's see what's happening in this entire for loop. The for loop runs each time the condition is true, and then it increments 1 to the value each time. So I started at 0, and then I ran into the if-else condition with the value for i, which was 0. And I'm asking if I divide i by 2, if I divide it by 2, is the remainder 0? Is there nothing left over? Well, it's saying, hey, there's nothing left over, so this is a true statement. It sets the value of board equal to the string that's an empty space. It, it exits out of the if condition, and it runs through the for loop again, but before it does, it increments the value of i to 1. So we run into the for loop, and we ask, well, is 1... When 1 is divided by 2 is the remainder 0, it says, no, this is false. So it sets the, the variable board to a hashtag now. It's not an empty string. It's a hashtag. And it runs back and forth through this for loop, setting the variable board either to an empty string or a hashtag. And it does this each time all the way until it gets to its last true statement, which is 8 or its last true value, which is 8. So when we run into the if-else condition this last time, it's asking, is 8 divisible by 2 or not, with the remainder of 0? Well, that's true, so board is set to the empty string again. In fact, I could prove this right now if I were to actually just set this last part, the else condition, to an empty string, and the, the if portion, the true statement, if if i is divisible by 2, well then I'll get a hashtag. And if I run through the program this time, I should only get one hashtag. Okay, and that's what happened. I only got one hashtag. Okay, so that's not exactly what I want, but I'm on the right track. I'm getting there. Okay, so what's really happening here? I'm defining board each time I run through this for loop, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to 
just leave the the name of the variable board inside of this for loop and now what I want to do is outside of the for loop I'm going to define the variable I'm not going to define it as one empty space what I'm going to do is actually just define it as nothing there's nothing in place there but board is being defined finally and it's being defined with nothing it's a string of nothing alright so what would happen if I ran through the program this time in fact, I'm just going to get rid of some space and clean that up. So this time I'm going to run through the program. What happens? Well, I still get nothing down here. And now when I'm clicking on my mouse and dragging over, I'm still getting that empty space. So something's not happening here. I'm going to go back to the for loop, that if-else condition. Well, what's happening inside of this if-else condition, it's running through the for loop still, but each time board is still being set to either an empty space or a hashtag since 8 the last value that's true the last condition that's true inside of this for loop is 8 it's divisible by 2 it's still being set to that empty space so what I actually need to do rather than resetting the value of board each time I run through the for loop I need to concatenate this string or both either string onto board so I'm going to put an additional an addition symbol before that equal sign. So I'm concatenating either the empty string or I mean the space, the empty space or the hashtag each time I run through the for loop. So when I run through the program this time, let's see what happens. Alright, so when I ran the program again, um, I'm seeing that, well, I have four hashtags here. In fact, if I click down and scroll over the entire, um, the entire window while well, I'm getting an empty space, a hashtag, an empty space, space, and a hashtag over and over, and I have four of each. Okay, so now I'm on the right track, but I don't want this to be one line long. I need multiple lines below this. Now I'm creating a chessboard. That's a grid, and when I think about grids, I think about math and coordinate planes, and I know coordinate planes I have an x and a y axis. If I look at all the code that I've written so far, it's helped me uh, to program a display that moves from left to right. Kind of like on my coordinate plane, I would think about my x-axis or my x-coordinates moving left to right. So in fact, one thing I want to do is look back over in my program and just change uh, my variables from i to x because they're indicating that I'm moving in a horizontal or a left to right direction. So anywhere I see i, I'm going to actually change that to x. Okay, so I have my characters for my x-coordinates on display. Now I need to start thinking about how I can create my characters to display downward for my y-coordinates. So I'm going to create another for loop here. And I'm going to name my counter variable y and set it equal to 0. y is less than or equal to 8. And I'm going to increment y by 1. Each time I run through this for loop, I'm going to open up a set of curly braces. But now I need to think about where I'm going to put the ending curly brace. Since my x-coordinates, since all of this information is producing a, a string or a line of characters, all I need to do is house this information inside of my for loop for my y-coordinates. And then each time I run through the for loop of my y-coordinates, move down a space. So what I'm going to do is indent all of the information for my x-coordinates and close, put my closing curly brace down at the very end for my for loop of my y coordinate. So what's happening here? Well, I'm going to run through the for loop the first time for my y coordinate set at 0. And it's going to run into another for loop for the x coordinates and it's going to, the x coordinates are going to run through its block of code to produce this first string. After that, after it's done, y is going to increment 1, but before I move forward, I need to move down a line. So what I'm going to do is, at one, what I'm going to do here is uh, concatenate a new line character to board. So I'm going to move down a line now, and... Now y will be set at 1. It's going to run into another for loop 
for the x coordinate and it should produce another string here. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so when I run this block of code, well, it looks like I have a grid. However, it doesn't really look like a chessboard. I mean, all of the hashtags are in line with one another. All of the empty spaces are in line with one another. But I don't want that. I want to actually alternate between uh, the hashtags and empty spaces depending on what line I'm on. So right here, on this second line here, I don't want an empty space. I want a hashtag in place. So what can I do over here? Let's look at both for loops, the, y, the, the for loop for the y coordinates, the for loop for the x coordinates. Well, when I run through the for loop for the y coordinates the first time, it runs through this entire block of code right here. And this entire block of code creates an entire line of empty spaces and hashtags. Now when I move down to the next line, y is going to be set to 1, but in this first space, x is set to 0. So y is 1, x is 0. I want to find a way to utilize that information to put a hashtag in this place. Well, I can do that right here inside of the if condition. If I take the value of x, which is at 0 right here, and add it to the value of y, which is at 1 right here, so if I add these two values together, well, 0 plus 1, or 0 plus y in this case, would give me a value of 1. 1 is not divisible by 2. It will not give me a value of 0. So I'm going to actually move on to the else statement and put a hashtag in its place. Let's see if that actually works. So I'm going to close the parentheses here and run this program again. So now the second time I run the program, I'm getting my characters to alternate between an empty space or a hashtag depending on the line that I'm on for my for loop of the y coordinates. Great, but it's still it's still a bit off. It, it's um, not looking like a chessboard and I'm getting this extra hashtag at the end of each line. The same thing's actually happening here as well. Well I'm actually seeing inside of my for loop y is less than or equal to 8 which means that I'm actually getting nine characters. Let's actually think about that again. Remember earlier at the very beginning, I said console.log, and I'm going to pass i in as a parameter. Now, if I ran this, it wouldn't work because I don't have i set as a value anymore, but I could use y or x, pretty simple, and I should get a value. So let's run that program. I'm getting nine, but I don't want nine spaces. I only want 8. So what I'm saying here is it's less than or equal to 8. I'm getting 9 characters back and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do first is get rid of this equal sign in both for loops. Okay. Now I'm going to run the program again. And I'm getting 8 as my, my value, my return value. Okay. And in fact, if you look down at the uh, chessboard that was created in this last round, it's looking more like that chessboard. I'm not getting that extra space at the end. Okay, so that's one thing that's that's helpful, but there's another thing. Each time I want to change the the uh, size of this chessboard, if I wanted to make it bigger for some reason, or if I wanted to change the size of this grid, I have to go into both for loops and change the value of 8. Maybe I did want to make it 9, or maybe I wanted to be really uh, silly and or crazy and make it even larger like 64, I have to go and change these values each time. And since I don't want to write extra information if I don't need to, I'm going to change this up a little bit. And it's our last comment in this, in this list. It says write the program so it changes for any size I want my chessboard to be. So this is pretty simple. I'm going to define a variable. I'm going to name it size. And I'm going to set it equal to, I'll set it equal to 8 in this case. And rather than using rewriting numbers each time, I'm just going to write the variable name inside of my, my checker here for this second statement. All right. So now when I run the program, I should get the same chessboard displayed, and I did. And now if I wanted to change the size of this chessboard, I would just change the value inside of my variable name for size. So the value this time I could say it's 64, run my program, I get a much larger grid, 
If I wanted something a little bit smaller, I could get that. Fairly simple, and I'm only changing that information in one place now. The last thing I'm going to do is get rid of that last console.log statement. I don't want it anymore to run the program, and last time I'm going to change the value back down to 8, run the program again, and now I have my chessboard on display. Now there's one last thing I could do if I wanted to clean all this information up, if I wanted to, and that's these uh, curly braces inside of the second for loop, um, working with the if statement. So if I actually wanted to just get rid of those curly braces, I could just remember that if you go along later on and you want to add some information to this if statement, you would have to put those curly braces in. So last thing I'm going to do is just get rid of those comments there. They're not needed anymore. And now after refactoring it just a little bit more, it's a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. I'm going to run through the program one last time. And again, over here, I see the same chessboard displayed. 